Hi, this is the Make Noise Morphogene. Uh, you're probably already aware of that. If you're anything like me, it's one of the reasons you got into modular synthesis. It does a lot of interesting things, tape processing, granular type things that are really good for ambient music, uh, which is kind of the, the genre that I dabble in the most. Uh, but if you are also like me, you may never have heard of this which is the Reflex Live Loop. Uh, similar kind of module, but different. It does similar things in different ways. Um, is it an alternative to the Morphogene? It's smaller. Uh, you can find them for cheaper. I found this one on sale for about half what I paid for the Morphogene, so um, you, you might be able to find a good deal on them, but I haven't heard many people talk about it much. Um, and hopefully uh, we can change that a little bit with this video. This is not meant to be a manual for the live loop. This is kind of meant to be a compare and contrast between it and the Morphogene and show how I use both of them, what they do that's similar, what they do that's different. Uh, there's a very good manual. Uh, it's very extensive on this unit, about like 50 pages or something like that. It goes into great detail, so check that out if you're interested in learning more about the technical aspects of this module. Okay, some similarities between the two. They both do live sampling. Um, that's the most basic thing that both of these units accomplish. Uh, if you're looking for something to get sounds into your rack and manipulate them, mangle them, you can do that with both of these units. One reason that I switched from the Cubit Nebulae, which is a great module I really like and may eventually repurchase at some point, is the ability that the Morphogene has to do splicing, um, which is basically where you take uh, a long sample and chop it up into many different parts and then you can resequence it and manipulate the splices in different ways. I thought that was really interesting. And guess what? The Reflex Live Loop does that as well. Granular processing is something that's really important to me. It's something that I love. love experimenting with granular sounds. Um, both units can do that. Uh, both units can get down to the, the chopped up tiny little uh, splices of splices. I think they're called genes in the morphogene. <laughs> With the live loop, you have something called G Move. Um, I think it's called G Move. Yeah, it's called G Move. Which does that kind of thing as well. So, granular processing, very much uh, doable on both units. Overdubbing and layering, uh, very easy to do on the Morphogene. It has a sound on sound like a tape deck. Uh, it's like if you covered the erase head on your tape deck and just kept building up more and more sounds. Uh, really great for that, very easy to do. The live loop has its very own layering mode, so you can basically, if you wanted to do harmonies on top of each other, uh, you could use it like a live looper in that way. <laughs> It also has 
is a foot switch uh, setting. So you could plug a foot switch directly into this if you're a guitar player or something, or a vocalist, and uh, punch in and punch out your loops in that way. So very easy to do live looping layering with the live loop. And I just realized that it's actually called the live loop, so that kind of makes sense. Okay, so clearly the live loop is just a cheaper, smaller morphogene, right? It, it does all the same things. Um, why would you ever need this uh, very colorful and fancy and wonderful looking module when you can get this kind of uh, industrial looking, um, very shiny module uh, for less? Um, well, they do similar things, but they do them in very different ways and they also have very different sounds to them. Uh, the morphogene, I've already mentioned, whoops, I think I just spliced something accidentally. So let me get something going here. Okay, let me flip over to what I just sampled. Now, when I change the speed on the morphogene, it sounds like a tape deck. Until eventually, it stops all together, right in dead center, right? And you can easily reverse the sample. So what we kind of have with the morphogene is a tape deck in our rack. The speed, the very speed, operates and manipulates the sample much like a tape deck would, a tape speed, right? So the pitch changes when the tape slows down, when the tape speeds up, the pitch speeds up. And you can reverse it as well as if you flipped your cassette tape around or whatever, if you like cassettes, I do. The live loop, more like a old school sampler and in that the sample rate is adjustable. So you can get really lo-fi sounds really easily uh, let me show you what I mean. Get it, the blend over to the uh, sound I just recorded. Now if I slow it down. Hear that down sampling? It's pretty nasty way down there. Yeah, so you can already hear the way that uh, just the algorithms work. Um, very different sounds that you can get out of both units. Another glaring difference between these two units is um, the SD card, which you do have in the Morphogene. You can save sounds, you can store these reels, they're called. Um, the live loop is more of a creature of the moment, um, love the one you're with kind of module. Uh, in other words, you can't save stuff. I think there is an expansion, like a MIDI expander type thing, uh, that might, don't quote me on that, uh, it might enable you to save, uh, sounds that you manipulated on there. I don't know exactly. I don't have that. So, um. The live loop, more of a spur of the moment, uh, capture it, move on, be sure that you record whatever you're manipulating because you'll probably never get that back exactly the way it was. So something to keep in mind. Uh, the way I use these units, that's not so much of an issue. I don't really store sounds that I use uh, sampled into the rack to use later. It's kind of more like a sound creation, sound design tool anyway. So not a big, huge thing, but something to consider if that's a big deal to you. Another difference between the two, the live loop, you can do uh, peak slicing. In other words, um, it's gonna detect the audio signal and automatically slice things up into different splices. Slice them into splices, yeah. So that's really neat if you do uh, like drum loops, for example. The Morphogene is great for ambient textural type stuff because of the way it handles splices. So if I go back, to what I recorded earlier. I'm just gonna splice this up. Now 
Now obviously you can splice things to a clock to get these things nice and clean and lined up. I'm just doing it on the fly here with the splice button uh, so that I can show you how quickly I can blend between So what we have here are overlapping splices, right? Obviously I could do all of this with CV that I'm doing with my hand. The organize knob, which blends through our splices here, could definitely do that uh, with some CV modulation. But it is extremely easy with Morphogene to create kind of this evolving texture uh, where things overlap in a very pleasing way. Um, and the live loop doesn't have that capability. So the splices, it's kind of, you're locked in from, you know, a hard cut from one to the other. Um, so if I get the live loop going here, I'll make some splices out of this. And then let me, let's see, let me take, let me get some CV going into this to play our splice. And then to cycle through our splices. This knob now works as an offset. So you can hear how it's a hard clip each time. There's no smoothing between the genes as there is in the morphogene, um, but it's still kind of an interesting sound. You can kind of, let me turn that down a bit, you can kind of work around this through using the play effects buffer. So the way I think of the live loop, it took me a bit to wrap my brain around this and I can't say that I have fully wrapped my brain around this module yet, it's still kind of new to me. But the way that I understand it, or the way that I think of it now, is once you record your sample, it's playing on loop in the play buffer, or the record buffer, okay? When you hit this green play button, it sends it to another buffer. It's kind of running in parallel that takes over, and that's what you hear. Uh, and then you can manipulate it with granular effects, uh, start-stop position effects, which means you can also reverse the sample if you move the start position past the end position. Um, so let me demonstrate that now. So now we have splices that are being sequenced through with the voltage block here, some, uh, some random CV. Let me turn on some granular processing. So I'll send that audio, the spliced up audio, into the play effects. So this is the G move setting on the play effects, which is the granular processing. Now I can clear this play effects by holding this down or stop the play effects and it goes back to playing those original splices, right? So now we're back in the record buffer. Let me move it to start stop position. Now I can adjust. See, I've reversed the sample. You can get kind of granular with this too if you get the, the start position and the, and the uh, end position really close to each other. Almost works like an envelope. And you've got CV control over both of these start and end positions. So you can affect the size of the grains, the start, the stop position, all of that stuff. Let me get that out of there. You can also record whatever you've done in play effects back into the record buffer, so then that becomes part of your original sample. You have a feedback knob up here, which basically sends the audio back into the record buffer. So yeah, really 
really versatile. You can see you can do a lot of things with it. And, uh, you know, you add a little reverb to that to kind of blend things together and you can still create some really good ambient textures uh, with this module too, even though it doesn't have the overlapping splices uh, like the Morphogene. Another thing you have with the live loop is a built-in EQ, uh, which you have CV control over, which is really, really cool. So I could basically put this into echo mode and have like a like a almost tape style delay where like the low and the high are kind of um, reduced uh, via EQ uh, and can really shape the sound that's being delayed. So you can hear, I can set, can take out some of the highs, can take out the mids, can boost the mids, take out the lows. All right, so let's get this thing going. So see, it's recorded that when I change the pitch knob, and it's feeding back into itself. And I can add CV control to this EQ. So I'm gonna CV control the upper band. First, I'm gonna get an appropriately lengthed cable because I am a proper modular synthesist. Set the attenuator. So now you can hear the, the high frequency being controlled with this LFO coming from the filter 8. Of course I can modulate that as well. So that, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Is the live loop kind of an alternative? Do you not need a morphogene if you have a live loop? Well, hopefully I've kind of demonstrated that they kind of do the same thing, but kind of don't also. Um, Morphogene is a great module. I love it. Uh, it's great, as I mentioned, for textures, ambient textures, ambient layers. Uh, you can also do rhythmic things with it if you're clever with your uh, CV. But yeah, the Live Loop is a great module. Um, and I don't know why I'd never heard of it. I guess probably because it's a smaller company with fewer modules and less money. Um, but there are some good tutorial videos from the creator of the module um, that came out about when the module did about five years ago, I think. And uh, they're very informative. They're a bit dated, but very informative on uh, the ins and outs of, you know, how the module really works, which I didn't get into too much today. So yeah, in my opinion, maybe if you can't afford a Morphogene yet, or you don't have the rack space for a Morphogene, this is, I think, what, four HP? smaller than the Morphogene. Um, it's a great alternative. Uh, it does a lot of the things. Uh, the learning curve slightly steeper to me than the Morphogene. Morphogene may be a bit more immediate, um, which is a weird thing to say about a make noise module because they are kind of notoriously different, right? But once you kind of wrap your head around it, it becomes pretty easy to understand, I think. That being said, I can never remember the button combinations on the Morphogene if I leave it for like a few weeks and then come back to it. Do not remember what does what. Uh, on the, the live loop, maybe it's just because I've been in the manual a bit more with it more recently. It seems like I can remember the structure of the module and how things work a bit more easily, even though it's a bit of a deeper dive on the front end to wrap your brain around the live loop. So I would say if you want something that you can just plug something into and get immediate results out of the live loop, maybe not the module for you. But if you are willing to spend just a little bit of time with it, uh, I think you're going to like the results that you get out of it. And it can do a lot of stuff. And I have just scratched the surface of this module myself and in this video. So yeah, I'm excited to uh, learn more about it and experiment more with it. It does some really unpredictable things that uh, are the good kind of unpredictable. So if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video. Um, 
I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, that helps. It helps us a lot here on the YouTube. It just shows the video to more people when you hit the like button, so um, please do that if you got anything out of this video at all or liked uh, any of my ramblings here. Um, I'm going to make more of these kinds of videos walking through. I think I'm going to do like a Matriarch versus Pro 3 comparison soon. Very similar style, what I like about each of them. Kind of a paraphonic uh, face-off video. So subscribe if you want to see more stuff like that. It's definitely coming. If you're interested in some of the examples that I used, uh, the sounds that I used in those examples are some of my own sample packs. Uh, so the first loop with the Morphogene and the Live Loop. That's just a little loop that I made with a Rev2 filter resonance patch that I made and then multi-sampled. And that is absolutely free. The link is in the description if you want to have that sampled instrument, uh, the multi-samples for that yourself, you can do that. Also have some DFAM loops. I use the DFAM quite a bit to show off kind of the rhythmic slicing and stuff. So that's also in my sample store, which I will link below. Be sure to subscribe to my email list on there. Uh, that's where I'm going to keep everybody informed about new videos, uh, new sample packs, all that stuff if you're interested. So thanks so much for watching and I really appreciate you sticking around and I, maybe I'll just do a little outro, uh, some stuff that I recorded earlier when I was messing around with this. So um, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.